Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm building a PC. In this video, we're going to be going over finding parts, what you'll need to build a PC, the parts that I used, and then we're gonna build this thing. I would also like to mention that this isn't meant to be a comprehensive tutorial, but more of a broad overview that will hopefully encourage you to try it yourself. This is the first time that I've built a PC and I had to edit out a lot of footage to make this a quicker video, so don't be fooled. I was very slow and cautious with each piece to make sure I was doing it all properly. There's a super handy site called PC Part Picker, which has a huge database of PC parts that you can use to plan out your build. You can use one of their pre-made builds or other people's builds as a foundation, or you can just start from scratch. That's what I did. I started with a case that I liked and worked my way up from there, putting in parts that were more affordable or that had the specifications that I was going for. Another nice thing about PC Part Picker is that it has up-to-date prices for stores in your region that might have that part in stock. Some of the stores that it connects to and that I got my parts from are listed here. Make sure to check your local computer store too so that you can support local and save on shipping costs. And ask your friends too or look around town. You never know what kind of goodies you might find. As far as tools go, you don't actually need a whole lot. I use a screwdriver that has multiple bits for most of the project. I also got myself an anti-static strap. One risk factor when building a PC is static electricity. If you're not grounded properly and are rubbing your socks all over the rug, you can fry your precious hardware. People online said that an anti-static strap isn't necessary if you have hardwood floors and touch your case every now and again, but I was super scared in a major way, so I got this strap to be extra careful. Another handy resource is Reddit. There are lots of communities with founts of wisdom if you find yourself needing some advice. Build a PC is great for advice regarding things like parts and compatibility. And build a PC sales is where people share current PC part deals. And maybe your friends can help you too. Here are some tutorials that I followed when building my PC. I also looked up review or build videos for individual parts that I needed extra help with. So we're starting with the motherboard. The CPU came with a cooler that I could have used, but I knew I'd have to upgrade it down the road anyway, so I just bought a better cooler right off the bat. To install the CPU, you just want to lightly place it down into the compartment. It's pretty fragile and forcing it in can damage it. Once it's in place, you can put the cover back on. Doing so will make the plastic piece pop off. You'll need to use a bit of force to get this arm down and into place. And that's all for the CPU! Next, we're popping in the RAM. If you're like me and you only have two sticks, you'll want to put them in alternating slots furthest away from the CPU. It'll also probably show you where to put them on the instructions to your motherboard. It takes a bit to get them in securely, but as long as the slit in the RAM is lined up, you can push them in until it all clips together. Time for the CPU cooler! The cooler came with two brackets, one for an AMD processor and another for Intel. I screwed the bracket on, dropped a dollop of thermal paste on the CPU, stuck the base behind the motherboard, and started lining up the screws.
It took some adjusting to make sure they were all lined up with the holes, and I was really careful not to let the cooler touch the thermal paste while I was doing this because it needs to have one even spread. If you accidentally do this and take the cooler off, you can just wipe off the thermal paste and start again. When screwing any of these parts into place, I secured the screws a little at a time in an alternating or crisscross pattern. I would keep going around in this pattern, tightening the screws a little each time until the whole thing was secure. This ensures that the part will be evenly attached and stable. Then I attached these brackets to either side to hold the fan in place and that was all. Here's my case, I love it and I love it so much. It came with three RGB fans in the front and it's super spacious and intuitive to work in. And it also looks really cool. All the hardware for the case was found in these hard drive slots. Now I'm gently setting the motherboard into the case and lining it up with the screw holes. I did the same alternating pattern here when securing it into place. The case fan installation was fairly simple. I only used four fans for now, so I lined them all up facing the same way. The rear fan will pull in the air and the front three will push the hot hair out into my face. Next up is the power supply unit. It took some time to read through the instructions and figure out which ports all the cables went into. I also found it kind of tough to get the cables into the ports securely as the click wasn't very obvious each time. But we got it done. If you have ventilation holes at the bottom of your case, you'll want to align the PSU fan with the bottom of the case, which is what I did. My case had handy little plates for the SATA SSD to be installed onto, but as convenient as that was, it was no match for my brute strength and infinite wisdom. Following a YouTube video that did the same, I plugged the cables into the SSD before installing it on the wall of my case. It snapped the SATA cable in my SSD. Ah. Thankfully, just the cable was broken and not my SSD. <laughs> I ran over to Best Buy and it ended up only being $10 for a new cable. Now it's time to plug all these teeny tiny baby cables into the motherboard. Luckily my hands are long and creepy which made things easier. I did a lot of double checking here to make sure everything was in properly. Being slow and overly cautious definitely paid off when I didn't have to go back and dissect things. Next up is my pride and joy Mr. Ventus. I unscrewed these two brackets on the side, lined this boy up and screwed it in place. It took a bit to line it up properly, but it was fairly straightforward. Pop this pie in the oven and that's all! Make sure your computer and monitor are plugged in and that your monitor is plugged into your PC. This might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised at how some people forget this. Welcome to operating system installation. 
Once everything is built, you'll have to install an operating system. And to do this, you'll need to have the tool downloaded onto a USB. I'm going to be explaining how to get Windows 10, since that's the operating system that I installed. You'll first have to source a USB stick that has a capacity of at least 8 gigs and another computer that has Windows. You'll then get online and visit this site up here, download the installation media tool and go through the steps there, which will install everything you need onto your USB. When it's time to boot up your new PC, you just stick the USB in and follow the prompts for installation. Keep in mind that this isn't a licensed version of Windows that you've just installed, but you can use it indefinitely without buying a license, although there are some limitations. For example, there will be a watermark on the screen and you can't change the wallpaper. And Windows 10 is super expensive, turns out. I got really lucky and got my hands on an older PC that had the license but didn't need it for what it was going to be used for. So I just quickly harvested that using a command prompt. A wise man once told me to install the operating system on the SSD because it's the fastest. So I have my operating system and all my games and applications installed on there. And then my documents and data are all stored on my HDD. Well, thanks for watching the birth of my new computer. If you have any questions or comments or experiences you want to share, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Goodbye from me and my computer.